Hey, what is going on guys? It's Young here and today I'm back in our Fortnite video. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the best aim assist settings to use in Fortnite for linear and also exponential settings. So if you guys are looking to improve your aim or looking for the best aim assist settings to use, definitely stay to the end of the video because I have settings for exponential and as well linear settings here in season three. And real quick, before we get into the video, I have a V-Buck giveaway. I give away 2,000 V-Bucks every single Friday. So if you guys want to take part in this giveaway and win some free V-Bucks, all you guys have to do is to drop a like on this video. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys do turn on post notifications so you guys get notified for every single new video. And we're going to announce the winners. And lastly, leave a comment down below of either your Xbox Gamer Tag, your PSN Gamer Tag, or Epic account, and you guys will be automatically entered into the next giveaway. And lastly, make sure you guys do support me in the item shop. All you guys have to do is go down to the bottom right, click on support a creator, type in creator code YOUNGHUMOR, and you guys will have me added and supported as a creator in the item shop. And alright guys, let's go right to the video. Alright, so in this video, I want to give you guys the best aim assist settings to use for linear and also exponential settings, and as well, I want to give you guys some very good tips and tricks that you guys can use to improve your aim in this game. So the first set of settings that I want to talk about are going to be the best linear aim assist settings to use. Now with linear, I wanted to do linear first because I know most of you guys do play on linear settings. I think I did a poll not too long ago, long ago where it was like 80% play on linear. So I want to show you guys those first. Of course, I will be showing exponential for those guys who play on that. But what you want to have for to have the best aim assist possible is first, of course, you want to have the vibration off. If you do have this setting on, you definitely want to have that setting off. It adds a bunch of inconsistencies. So make sure you have that off if you guys don't. I'm pretty sure most of you guys do so for my sensitivities i have a 1.9 for my building and a 2.1 for my editing and as well going down into my horizontal and vertical speed i have a 44 percent on both i think this is the best settings to use it has the most control with of any of the settings that i played on while also not being too slow to the point where you can't turn around if necessary i really like these settings a lot and i'll specifically explain why i like all the settings that i do and then I have a 10% and 10% for my vertical and horizontal speed. And then I also have no look dampening time on. I usually have a little bit of this setting on, but the reason why I have it off is because my X and Y sensitivity is both on a 44%, which is already pretty low. So I don't feel like you need any extra look damping time, but I think look damping time is a great way to help improve your aim. If you feel like you're just missing a little bit too many shots from range, or maybe at like a hit fire, like close range distance, if you feel like you're missing a lot of shots, definitely give look dampening time a try. And then I had 10 or I had 11 and 10 for my dead zones and then note foot controller on because it adds input delay so those are the settings that i have for linear that i think are the best way to improve your aim and are really good for uh, just having the best aim assist possible now one thing to keep in mind and one really good tip i'm going to give you guys for aim i mentioned this in a couple of videos ago but in case you guys didn't see it and it's how i'm able to aim very well when it comes to distances and you can also do this at any range but one th the one really really good tip that you guys can use to improve your aim from range so when it comes to aiming from distances, and especially this is really, really important on linear settings, is when you're trying to aim over a target and if you're trying to make those small analog stick adjustments, it can be very difficult to do because based on the way the linear settings feel, it can be very difficult to make just slight adjustments to the left and right. But a really good way to kind of go about that, if you need to make a small adjustment from range, instead of just aiming with your right analog stick, what you can do is you can move your player over to the left and right because you can make much more accurate and precise small adjustments by moving your character instead of using the right analog stick just because linear settings make it very hard to do so. And this is one of the best ways to line up your shots very easily. So when you're aiming, just remember to use your character's body. So move left and right with your left analog stick to help you line up those shots from range. Just because a lot of people think when you're aiming, it's all in the right analog stick. It's all where you're looking. But I think it's really important when you are going for shots that you try to line it up with your character's movement as well. Using your character's movement to your advantage when it comes to lining up your shots is very important. It's going to help you get way more hits off of the other player and improve your accuracy tenfold. So making sure to move your character to, to use your character's movement to line up your shots is going to be a really, really good tip to help you guys line up your shots, especially from range. Because 
because those small analog stick adjustments can be very difficult to really line up on linear settings. On exponential, it's a little bit easier, but on linear settings, it can be very difficult to line up those shots very accurately from distance. So making sure you use your character's movement to help you line up your shot is going to be a very, very excellent way to hit way more shots in this game. Now, the reason why I chose a 1.9 building and a 2.1 editing, I really like these settings a lot because the 2.1 editing is, it's really just in the range between being very smooth and also being uh, very fast as well. You can be fast with these settings if you want, but these settings for me, I have way more control over my builds, which is really important because you don't want to overcorrect when you're going against other players. That can, infect your aim, that can affect your aim a ton, and that's going to be a big problem that I see a lot of people with high sensitivity have, is after they finish off their edits, they overcorrect and they're all the way over here to the side, and it makes it very difficult to line back up with the other player that they're initially editing, you know, towards. So that's why if you're looking to improve your aim, you do want to play on a lower building and, and editing sensitivity because it will help you line up your shots and prevent you from overcorrecting as badly. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind that's going to really help you improve your aim a lot. But of course, you don't want to have your sensitivity too slow to the point where if you need to get off a quick edit, you're not able to do so. So I feel like the, the 1.9 and the 2.1 is... For me, I think a really good sensitivity to have, I'm used to like a crazy high building and editing. I really like the 2.5s. I usually play in like a 46 or 47% with like a 2.5 or 2.4 building and editing. So I do play on a very, very high sensitivity. So this sensitivity here for me is a little bit lower and I feel like I'm in a lot of control. I feel like it's very fast and also very controlled at the same time. But of course, if you feel like the editing sensitivity is a little bit too high, you can definitely drop it down to maybe like a 1.9 or a 2.0. Just depends on what you think or what feels like you have the best control. Because that's really important if you want to be able to improve your aim is to have way more controls over your, you know, specifically your accuracy but also having a lot of control over your building and editing is going to help you get your shots off and be much more accurate in this game so the next things I want to show you guys is going to be the exponential settings and the best aim assist settings to use for exponential. So here are the settings that I have. I have a 2.1 for my building and also my editing. And of course, this is a little bit on the higher end too, because like I said, I do like a higher building and editing sensitivity. You can definitely try like a 2.0 for a building and editing. And then for my horizontal and vertical speed, I play on a 47 and a 46% with a just slightly higher X sensitivity, which I'll explain in just a minute why I have it. But I really do like having just a slightly higher horizontal speed or vertical. I think there's a lot of advantages towards it. And then I play on a 12% and a 12% for my ADS sensitivity with a 0 0.03 look damping time, which is almost barely anything, but I just wanted a little bit of a look damping time to get the best aim possible when it came to ranges. So that's why I play on a 0 0.03 look dampening time. And then my dead zone and also the full control setting that's both the same as before because that's just the, those are just the dead zones that work for me the best. So these are the best exponential settings to use for aim assist in my opinion. Now everything still applies when you're looking to aim from range whether you play on linear or exponential settings. I think it's really important to also use your character's movement to help you aim. That's going to be one of the best tips I can give you guys to improve your accuracy. It has improved my accuracy a ton and it doesn't have to be just for long range. It could be for close range. And also medium range could be dealing with aim, aiming down your sights or even hip firing. There's so many different advantages by using your character's movement to aim. So you really want to focus on doing that when you are trying to improve your accuracy. But the reason why I liked a 47 and a 46%, just a slightly higher horizontal sensitivity, which is a sensitivity when you're looking left to right. I liked a little bit higher because I think that gives you just a little bit of a boost when it comes to hitting your flick shots. And also not to mention when you have just a slightly higher X sensitivity, a slightly higher horizontal sensitivity, it's going to help you when you're maybe boxing up. It's going to help you turn around a little bit faster in boxes. So, and that's the same thing that could be applied to the linear settings. I really like the 44%. I feel like I'm very accurate, but at the same time, you feel like if it's just slightly too slow turning around, you can definitely turn it up just you know one or two points to be able to turn around just a little bit faster in boxes if you feel like that's an issue but I really like having just a slightly higher X sensitivity and sometimes I do like having it for the linear settings as well just because it gives you a little bit more speed when it comes to flick shots and also just turning around in boxes I think that's just a huge advantage when it comes to having a slightly higher X sensitivity over Y and also same thing applies when it comes to editing your walls you want to make sure that you have 
you know, something that's a little bit fast, but also at the same time, you have a lot of control. So you don't overcorrect way too much on your builds and edits. So you always want to be very careful when you're choosing your editing and building sensitivity that you have, that you're fast enough, but also at the same time, you have enough control where you're not overcorrecting and just overshooting all of your shots. So those are the settings that I think are the best for aim assist when it comes to linear and also exponential settings. And if you guys like this video, make sure you guys do drop a like. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Make sure you guys do hit that notification bell so you guys can notified for every single new video and as well I do live stream every single day here on this channel at six o'clock eastern standard time so definitely come by my live streams if you guys haven't already just hit that notification bell and you guys will get notified when i go live here on this channel but with that being said i do appreciate you guys watching the video and all right guys i'll see you next video